Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Get Yourself the Job with Jennifer Hill and Brandon Maslin, only on LA Talk Radio. Well, happy almost new year to everybody from wherever and whenever you are tuning in around the world. I'm Jennifer K. Hill, and it is such a pleasure to have you here with us today with myself and our co-host, Brandon Maslin, and our special guest today, Amy Miller. Before we introduce you to Amy, I would love to take a moment to A, welcome you, and thank you, of course, for being here with us, and also to thank our sponsors who make today's show possible, the people over at Markham Search LLC. Markham Search offers premier professional recruiting services throughout the United States, including temporary staffing, permanent placement, and payrolling services. So please do keep them in mind for all of your payrolling and other needs. Brandon, I know I could introduce our guest. She has so many accolades. It's easy to read off her bio, but I think it might be a little bit more personal if you shared a little bit about how you know Amy, and then we can deep dive into our last episode of the year. Yeah, wow. Uh, how do I know Amy? I've known Amy for over two decades. She's married to my best friend in the world, and Amy has, by extension, has become one of my best friends in the world. Uh, we've been part of each other's uh, weddings, respectively, life journeys, both highs and lows. Uh, Amy's a daughter of someone we dedicated one of our shows to this year, Tom Miller, uh, our episode on kindness. Mm. It's a perfect segue. There's, I'm going to read, it's very weird. I've never, I've never had to introduce Amy's bio because she's one of my best friends, but let's try it. Um, it's impressive. She was uh, both on Broadway and a national tour of 42nd Street. And uh, she's been in countless other shows. We'll get into the work she's doing presently in Transcendence Theater. Uh, she was also in... Um, TV, one of my favorite shows ever, The Newsroom, Law and Order, Jake in Progress. She was in over 20 national commercials. There was a point in the early 2000, uh, like late 2000, 2010, where if you turn on the TV, you were going to see Amy's face in a commercial. She's driving cars. She's in it. If there was a, if there was something to be sold, uh, Amy was the one selling it. And countless other things. She's an amazing mother to my godson, Mike, uh, an incredible wife to my best friend, Brad. But more than all those things, she's just an incredible friend to all who know her and hold her dear. And finally, she is the founder, uh, co-founder, creative director, visionary force of this badass, amazing, incredible, transcendent theater company called Transcendence Theater. It is changing lives. I, I kid you not. Uh, Amy has been visioning probably since she was born. But one thing that is unique to Amy Miller is there are many people who vision. There are a few people who make that vision become a reality. And what Amy does best is she helps visions become reality and then helps others find their visions and make those a reality too. And I can tell you for sure that she's done that for me uh, many times in my lifetime. So I'm honored and blessed to know her as a friend and to just watch her on stage uh, as many times as I have. Uh, she's one of the most talented humans, uh, top, uh, the bottom from singing to dancing to just being. Uh, so that's my intro for the amazing, incredible, inspiring Amy Miller. Thank you so much for being here with us, Amy. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> I could go, I could keep going. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here with you. And Jennifer, so wonderful meeting you. And Brandon, you know how I feel about you. And he's truly one of my best friends on earth. And just, I wanted to thank you both personally too to dedicating the show to my dad, Tom, because he was the kindest man. He had a beaming smile. And I re-listened to the episode today, actually. And Brandon was talking about how he believed in us when we couldn't believe in ourselves. So to dad. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. It sounds like an incredible woman, Amy. I, I just can only imagine what a wonderful father and friend and mentor he was for everybody he came in contact with. I mean, we all just pray and hope that every day we spend on the planet winds up adding up to being somebody who would be memorialized and that people would say, gosh, you know, we miss this man and he was an incredible person. And I think that's one thing perhaps that 2020 has taught us is that life is short. We don't know how long we have. You know, I just lost a friend a couple of weeks ago and could barely even keep it together on the show because my heart was broken. And just as I was hopping on, another friend got diagnosed with COVID. 
And I think that it's people who show us strength and grace, even in the times of pressure, whether it's been the firefighters, the nurses, the doctors, you know, the police officers, everybody this year who we've all had to rise above the strength that we thought we even had. And I think it sounds like your dad was a pinnacle of that. And so are you. So I'm so grateful to have you here with us for our last show of the year. Well, thank you so much. I mean, right, I think that's one of the things all of us learned even more this year about the importance of like Brandon shirt he's wearing, like every moment counts and the importance of being there for people and showing up as your best. And like you said, too, which is what transcendence means, it's taking a challenge and rising beyond it. And the reason you're rising is not just for yourself, it's for others. Great point. That's beautiful. So Amy, when we were talking, Jennifer and I talk, we usually plan these things out pretty far in advance. And we both agreed you were going to close out the year. And it's part of the reason is um, we've closed out, you and I and Brad and my wife and so many others have closed out so many years together, doing some visioning, doing some dreaming, doing some uh, set the intentions of the year. I, I used to host about 20 to 40 dinners throughout the Bay Area every year for leaders. And every year, my the end of the year dinners were set your intention for the year, name your year. So I'm really grateful for you being here. As you know, the show is Get Yourself the Job. You've had such a unique career. Can you maybe talk about the pivots? We had a show um, earlier, we called it the year. Finally, I joked around that I don't know if this is my circumstance, but this is the first year since I've known you. I didn't name my year. I don't take, you know, I'm not going to take the fault of the year, but it was a pretty crappy year for me and a few others. So we named it, though, the year of the pivot. And I got to tell you, ever since I've named the year, things have been going infinitely better for me, my family, and my clients. So, so far, I've named this the year of the pivot. I'd love for you to talk about that idea, though. That idea of pivoting in one's career, never settling. Could you just talk maybe even your roots coming out of Ohio to your journey to where you are today? Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you brought this up, though. Like Brandon said, we always have a vision summit at the end of the year. We'd go to a great place. We'd be in nature. We'd all vision our years out and set those intentions. And um, yeah, in terms of pivoting and in terms of my career, an artist's career is... I, I look at things not as pivots, but as an evolution, an evolution of artistry. Because it's something like when, I, I think that all of, everyone knows this, all of life is a work of art. That life is one great adventure. And I really view that every person is an artist because artists create something beautiful. So life is this one great story. So as I set off for my career, which my main, main goal was to dance on Broadway, which just one of the biggest, just amazing moments of my life when that happened for all the people that made that possible. And every bit of it, whether it be starting on stage dancing when I was five years old, whether it be being on Broadway or moving to LA or starting a theater company or being on TV and film, I realized that I was never giving anything up. I was just transcending to that next level of my artistry. So when I look at the year of this year as like a year of a pivot or all of our plans didn't go in the direction that we thought they were supposed to go in, in. It was just an evolution of living out your purpose and vision and mission and life. That's the way I look at it. So although this year is so incredibly difficult for, for every single person in the entire world, I feel it's allowed me to, to go to our, my next level of service to the world and, and all the people around us as well doing that. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yeah. That was beautiful, Amy. And I love that you use the word transcendence. And of course, the name of your company is Transcendence Theaters. I'd love to chat for a moment uh, about the idea of vision, visioning, virtualizing, and manifesting. Because I know for a lot of people, we've, we've had this opportunity to let things go in this year. And it was interesting for me earlier tonight, I'm eight hours ahead in Portugal. I started to watch a movie that was highly recommended called Soul. Have either one of you guys seen that by Pixar yet? 
No, I have a very, um, very moving, poignant story. Just a little bit I've seen so far. One of my friends, Coach Karen, who joined us here earlier on the show this year, had highly recommended on her feed. I said, okay, I want to pause and take a moment. And it starts off where you have this gentleman who's kind of living a lackluster career. Like he meant for his career to be this famous soul jazz artist. I don't know about you guys, but I like feel soul music like in my bones. You know, you just hear somebody play a trumpet or the piano or whatever it might be and you just feel it. And so the movie starts off and I'm not giving anything away because this is how it begins with this man who has spent his whole life kind of selling out and giving up on his dream, wanting to be that epic jazz musician. And then finally, an old high school student of his calls him and he says, hey, dude, you know, how's it going? And he's like, great. And he says, you know, you know, this particular artist, he says, yeah. And he says, hey, what about her? And he says, do you want to come and play with her? He's like, oh my God, I would be, I could die a happy man if that happens. And he is literally jumping and singing. He goes to the audition. He plays the best music of his life, like literally culminates in this epic thing where the woman who is his idol says, okay, great, you're hired, come back later tonight. And as he's skipping and jumping and dancing and twirling on his way, you know, to go home to prep for the show later that night, he falls in a ditch and dies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this is, a, you're like, how could this happen? But I love the moral of this story, whether or not you get further into it or ever watch this movie or not, he's then on the other side and saying, no, not me, you don't, you don't get it. I missed the biggest opportunity of my life. I, you have to send me back. And I have no idea how it's all going to culminate and you know turn out. But how often do we live our lives like that? We live our whole lives hoping for that one day, that big break, that Broadway play that we're going to star in, that CEO role or that corner office, whatever that je ne sais quoi, that certain something is. And then poof, life is gone. Something happens. So how do we live our life? This is my question to you, Amy. How do we embrace and transcend every moment so that no matter when, poof, the last day of any one of our lives comes, that we know we have visioned, we have transcended, and we have lived our life and we have squeezed every last piece of juice out of that life. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, that is wonderful. Everything you just said was wonderful. It's been the journey actually of what transcendence is like in the learning of it. Like you said, all of us, we sit from the time we were little, this is our dream, this is our goal. We're gonna to go to the top of the profession, going to dance on Broadway, going to be like you said, make a million dollars in a year, whatever it is. And I started realizing around that path as you achieve more and more, gosh, every single moment was important. Every single one, even the hardest ones, the, although it's, you never want to go through something hard, every moment was important. And we ask questions at Transcendence all the time because that's like overcoming challenges. And we were like, what's our emergency? Why are we doing our art? Someone asked, what's the emergency? And I thought about it, like what's the purpose? And the purpose is the now. The emergency or the strong purpose is cherish, cherishing that moment. So that if we do get to the end of our life or it comes quicker than we think that every moment has been lived fully and you're living it for other people's stories too. That's what I've realized that life is this incredible, great story. And all our stories, even being on this call with you today are combining, we're all learning. Every moment changes the world. So I, the, the way that I've realized through the years to be able to keep that going is just like, Brandon has the shirt. The theme was every moment counts. That was for 2018, I believe. We're settling. Ah! <laughs> every moment counts. Transcendence is Broadway under the stars. One of the questions too that we ask um, every night at those shows, are you ready to have the best night ever? And people make fun of it, but it's just appreciating this is the moment we have in the good times and bad times. So to answer your question, to me, it is a constant, daily reminder to myself and those around us, no matter what's going on, be in that moment and live it fully. Can you talk about that, Amy? You, that idea of the constant daily reminders. It's one of the things that certainly has 
impacted me on a personal level, both in watching you and 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 being your friend, but also watching what transcendence does. That 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 ever vescent moment of watching, you know, I have the luxury, I have the gift, I should suppose, of watching the people who make it all happen, then the me and the actors and being in the audience and watching moments be transcendent, if you will. But can you talk about why or how people can give more meaning or purpose to their moments and even better how they can use that one thing you and I talked about because we both have had our moments of of struggle and doubt and perseverance through and I think most people would say we're positive uh, people you and I and yet we both know that that that's that's not it doesn't it's a lot of work to be positive and to try to inspire. So can you talk about the work that goes into, someone just emailed me and said, Brandon, the conversation we had made me more optimistic. And I said, I don't know if you could have paid me a higher compliment for one conversation in 2020. So can you talk about the work or what has to happen to create those moments to transcend or impact? Right. Well, and the one thing too is as the work is unique to everyone, what every single person does, everybody's perspective, everybody's experience, they are gonna find their own ways to remind themselves daily. So it's about empowering yourself to find it. Cause there's no one, I wish, I wish there was like a book that told you exactly what to do and it would work for all of us. And, and through the years and like, it's <laughs> everything is just, awesome all the time um so everything doesn't work perfectly for everyone but some of the things i do too and i don't do them all every day but it's that it's that moment of waking up in the morning right and being able to look around and be grateful for everything that you have you know the little youtube video where the girl's jumping up and down do you remember what i'm talking about she's jumping up and down being like i love my life i love my house i love my family and it's not that i do that every day but i look around and i can look out at at a sunrise and sunset and be i'm grateful today and and really looking at micah's smile that's my little son he just had his first birthday yesterday looking at his smile every day and Brad's smile, it, it centers me in the moment and, and really takes you into the moment. Um, another thing too is being surrounded by incredible people, right? Friends that will be there for you in those good times and bads. I can't even tell you how many times I've talked to Brandon where he, he has dug me out of the fetal position on the ground crying to keep going. You are one of the most incredible people and one of the incredible circle of people that surround. So I think a good support system is so, so important and so wonderful. And then another thing, and I could talk for days, but another thing to really center and transcend in the moment that I found through the years is that you're not just living your life for yourself. And I know we all know that we aren't, but in that ability to know that your, your gifts, your dreams, your visions and intentions that you have to keep going on the walk of life because you're going to impact other people as your stories intertwine. And that's a belief and faith that centers me in the moment all the time. So true. Can I offer a tool for everybody? It's one of my favorite fallback tools when I am curled up in the fetal position and cursing the world. Like, this is not fair. Like, we could all sit around. I'm sure we could all have a sob fest and be like, this is not fair. No, this is not fair. This should not be this way. This should not have gone this way. I have all the evidence in the world, right? And when I notice I'm personally in those moments of anger, fear, loss, sadness, whatever it is, A, it's okay to be in those spaces. Number one, give yourself permission. You're a human being. Call your Brandon, call your Amy, whoever it is, and just allow yourself to feel. So number one is a mode. But number two, when you're ready and when you're ready to crawl, and sometimes it's literally like pulling yourself out of that proverbial like emotional hole of sadness or despair that you might feel. And I know I've been there more times than I can count this year. What I then do is I say, okay, I am sick and tired of this. Universe, it's you and me. How am I gonna get there? And what I do is I write down a hundred things I'm grateful for. And I love that you just shared that about Brad, your husband, Amy, and about Micah, your son. 
And what I would invite people to do is what if between now and the end of the year, you know, we have about four days left before the end of 2021, could you write down 25 things you were grateful for today, tomorrow, the next day, and the last day? And how might that help you shift it? What if you wrote down the things you were grateful for? It's easy to talk about all the loss and sadness we've had, although on the lines of visioning and virtualizing and having the 2021 that you want to name, that you want to have manifest all of your dreams, it begins with a solid foundation of first knowing what matters. That is one of the most powerful questions that any human being could ever ask another human being. What matters to you? And take that time, ask yourself that today, tomorrow, the next day, and not just these four days, but every day of every year. And play with this idea, ask yourself, could you come up with a hundred things you're grateful for? And whether you're looking to create a best-selling Broadway play or to get your dream job or whatever that might look like, you can't do that without a strong, solid foundation of gratitude for what already exists, like Amy so beautifully just uh, virtualized and showed us through her passion for the people she loves in her life. And it's okay to have both. I love that you shared, Amy, that you can be curled up in the fetal position and your soul feels like it's cracking sometimes and simultaneously pull yourself back up one thing at a time by connecting to gratitude. That was so well said. <laughs> it's so amazing. I mean, because life is ups and downs, right? It's a grand adventure. It has comedies and tragedies and laughter and joy and love. And so there is this constant being able to, you know, when you hit rock, rock bottom, right? Or experiencing those things, you have to just rise up. You have to use the power of A, the most important things in your life, like you said, and the gratitude. What are they? Because at the end of your life, all the accolades and all those triumphs are amazing in the careers, but it is the importance of human connection. It's something, did we ever think we would go through a year where we wouldn't be able to hug our loved ones? Yeah. Or, I'm, I mean, or just be with people in the same room, right? I think it really has taught us the, what is important to everybody. And I think as you enter into a new year, you should do, like you said, you should ask those questions. What is important to you as you look to manifest your, your next level and evolution of, a life, of your life? And then what are you grateful for? And then from there, you will be able to rise as your dream unfolds. I like to look at life as a fun adventure, as this extraordinary dream that's unfolding. And when I get knocked down, it's awful, but then you get back up and you keep going towards that dream. So really too, we can, I look at this year as a blank canvas, that people are there with a blank canvas because so many people's lives have been transformed. All of our lives have been transformed. It's a blank canvas. So create your artistry, go forth and use the power of your mind and the visioning and the movie in your head or, how, or your vision board or whatever you want to do and create that life and it will go to its next level and that's transcendence. Beautiful. One thing, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, Jennifer. Go right ahead, Brandon, please. I talk to Amy all the time. So I have, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, the one thing that I, one thing that I wanted to point out cause I wanted to turn it back to you on your question was once you have that vision or that goal, whatever it might be, it might just be to get a promotion. It might be to start a theater company. It could be anything in between. You know, it's that one thing that I noticed about Transcendence and my friends there is the listening tour. They, they traveled around the country in an RV and talked to, I don't know, something like 80 regional theaters. They, they started down in Mexico. I think so many people are so busy trying to be at the pinnacle of success. They, they forget to learn along the way or experience the journey. And so they have no joy there. They have no pleasure in the experience, but they also never arrive to the, to the eventual eventuality. So I'd love to touch on that. And the other thing that occurred to me that is I never really said about Amy, but I think this is so true for leadership is that great leaders dream so big that they don't just inspire you to join them. They inspire you to dream as well. And, and, and I've seen that 
time and time again with Amy Miller. And I've seen that time and time again with the power of, of transcendence and the people who are part of that. Jennifer, th those are more my statements about why Amy's amazing. What question might you have or thought? Well, there are a couple of things that just came to me, Brandon, what you shared and what Amy has shared thus far. A couple of concepts I would love to share a few times in this episode. I've mentioned a concept called virtualizing. Have either one of you ever heard of that before? I have not. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it would be in alignment with what both of you are talking about, and I would love to offer it to our audience. So my business coach, Julian Adler, who I love and adore and helped me to get to the point of building and selling a company, I couldn't have done it without him. He taught me to virtualize. So what made me think of it, Amy, is when you said your mind movie. I highly encourage people to look up the concept of mind movies. I know Dr. Joe Dispenza and many other people have been huge proponents of that. But even without having to go through creating a mind movie, what you can do is you can taste, smell, touch, feel, and see what you want to have happen. And I remember when Jules introduced me to this concept, it was probably about three or four years ago. And I had this dream. I had this wonderful team of people who we had worked together. We had built the company. And I thought, you know, how cool would that be to be one of those companies where I get to fly everybody on a private jet to Vegas? Now, this was like a pipe dream goal, right? Like, oh my God, that would be so freaking <laughs> cool. How fun would that be? So my team and I talked about it. I said, guys, would that interest you and all? And of course we're like, yeah, that would interest us. How about we like go to Vegas, we go, we go see a show, all this stuff. And so we created this goal and it was really a stretch goal. And the reason I share this, you know, today on one of the, well, the last show we're doing before the end of the year is that we are able to achieve so much more than we think. But number one, it begins with having a desire and pushing that desire and expressing your heart's desires and even articulating it. It starts by speaking it, the thing you're most afraid of. I'm going to say it right now. I don't know how or why Oprah and I are going to do an interview in 2021. I'm intending to be you know, compelling and that we're going to have this incredible conversation about her story. And I like to say things that make me uncomfortable because it's in those moments where you're kind of like pressing with the boundaries of who you know yourself to, de to be that you can begin to expand bigger and bigger than you've ever known yourself. And to take it back to the concept of virtualizing, I remember Julian worked with me about this and I sat there and I saw it. I could like, we created this huge stretch goal. I saw the team and I sitting on a private jet. I saw, I could taste the champagne. I could hear the clink of glasses. I could hear the laughter and the joy of the team. And I could feel the sensation of the seat below us. And so we go through all of this and by God, you know, the last quarter, right before I sold the company too, we hit a target that we had never, it was unprecedented. And when I had the ability to tell the team, guys, you're never gonna believe this, but we're going on a private jet to Vegas and we're going to go see a show and stay there for the weekend. You know, it was literally exactly like you virtualized it. And I tell people this because it can be one thing to see something with our mind's eye, like a mind movie. It can be another thing to speak it, to use our voice to share about it. But when we can sense it, when we can taste it, touch it, smell it, hear it, it adds this different sense of reality. And I love you know, the neuroscience that supports this. All of the latest science on consciousness all shows us this isn't some pipe dream out here. It actually is scientifically proven that when you do these things, all of a sudden our consciousness births our reality. So if we're living in a reality we don't like, Let's change it. Let's make a different choice for 2021. Amy, your thoughts? <laughs> I think it, I just totally agree with that. I look back at my life too, of like that full body experience. Like there were times in um, LA when nothing existed. I lived in LA and the theater company didn't exist. So I would get up every morning I do these magic walks that Tony Robbins, you know, I don't know if you've done that, but it's like gratitude and visioning and, and that you had to feel things. And I would go to the end of this cul-de-sac. I lived in Studio City and I would stand there with my hands on my hips and I'd have that feeling of what, what was it gonna be like when I was standing on the stage when we found it for Transcendence Theater? What's that gonna feel like? And what's, and this is an important part too, when I talk about when like dreaming and visioning too, what is that feeling gonna be like when you ask the question, how can you serve? 
How can you impact people? How can my story give back to others? And I would stand there and be like, we're on the stage and I would look out and see all the people, right? See every single one of them because everyone who walks into a theater is important and see them and feel that, that energy and that love and that applause. And then look, I, I know it all sounds weird but I did everything like I didn't know it was called Virtualization, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. virtualization. It's, I don't know if Julian came up with it, but case for us or us. <laughs> it's really amazing. It's just like, I, you know, you, I mean, and I don't even think it's weird. I think you're experiencing something. I think it's dreaming. I think it's looking whether you're on your private jet or whether you're standing next to the love of your life or whether you're standing on a stage serving or, or serving others or when I think about it, because I know transcendence is already having such a big impact, but I know in 2021, it's going to grow nationally and I hope one day internationally. And when I think about that in my head, just like you, I think of like these little things connecting everyone we're going to touch and share that energy with. So that feeling, just like you said, I think is a wonderful tool that maybe many people haven't heard before. And it's a wonderful thing to take into their life, especially going into this new year when we have that blank slate and we can ask those questions, how can you serve? What can I give unique to the world that can, that can bring happiness or joy or impact or motivation or whatever it is to others? So that's wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, one thing we could do is just ask every day when we wake up, what is my assignment and what's my life purpose? Those were two things Reverend yeah. Michael Smith taught me from Agape is every day, as soon as I'm finished meditating, I ask universe, what is my assignment for today? And what is my life purpose? And how the heck do you want me to fulfill on it? That's the important question, right? We can all feel like my purpose is to create a theater or be a great leader, whatever it is. And the bigger question is how the heck do I fulfill on that? <laughs> It's true. And Brandon, were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Another thing when I was thinking back to our vision summit, and we had, we had gone uh, to Hawaii with my family, my mom and my dad, and Brandon and Aaron and Sidel came, my brother Brian, and we had just wanted, because he had had pancreatic cancer, and we wanted to go when he was healthy and to get there. And we had the vision summit overlooking the water. And Brandon was doing all these exercises of making everything more clear, strip it down to the clarity, to the heart of the matter. And after literally hours of conversation, one of the most profound things that came out of that is that every single person said, I just want to be accepted for who I am and for the people around me to accept me for who I am and where I am and support me as I continue on the journey. To know, you know what, no matter what's going on, that I am enough right here living my story. Cause we're always, we're, that's what we do. We're always like climbing, rising. What's the next step? What's the next thing in the career? What am I gonna do instead of really being in that moment? So that's something definitely, definitely I learned and an important part, I think, of visioning and looking at your goals for the new year. Yeah, I think it's so powerful. And uh, have either one of you guys tried futureme.org to write yourself a letter from the future? It's no, awesome. but I have to. <laughs> it's amazing. I just got my letter from myself last year and it's pretty crazy that even though this year turned out the way it did, 50% of what I manifested and told myself would happen did. I was like, okay, well done universe. <laughs> Still not a bad number, 50% for 2020. Uh, <laughs> but I recommend if anybody wants to, it's a really cool way to kind of wrap up the year and a year from now it's free to do. You just go to futureme.org and you can send yourself this letter from the future. That is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I love this time of year too, because it's so exciting. It's, you know, I know it's just the switch. It feels like such, you know, that you're starting anew and it allows us to think about all these fun things and dream. And I always try through the year to leave myself notes all the time and just continue dreaming. I'm a creative person. I dream. I think we're all living in natural magic, whatever our stories are. And I do believe in synchronicities and serendipitous events that guide us on our path, like you were saying of like, well, how's this all gonna work out, right? 
But when I, when I trust the journey and I trust the universe or I, and you ask those questions, how can you serve or how can I fulfill this? I get little clues and signs along the way that I know in our story, you know, we're on the right track. So that's a fun thing to always think about at this time of year and then throughout the year. And Amy, one thing you are is a ferocious journaler, probably the most prolific journaler I've ever known. Uh, can you talk about the importance of that in, in virtualization and making your dreams a reality? What, what, what way does journaling play a role in our careers? I think journaling is so important to, pe to people, or at least to me. You know, other things work for other people. There is something still powerful in this world of technology, though, to take an actual pen or a pencil or whatever that thing is, instead of typing on the computer, but you can type on the computer, whatever works for you, but writing it to page, it's your mind going to the page. And it's so important to get your thoughts, at least for me on page. And my, my best friend, Maggie, is a big, she's been doing the morning pages again, uh, you know, the Julia Cameron, three pages a day. She's done it for a year. Have you done that, Jennifer? I <laughs> was love it. Like, I was just going to ask if this was inspired by The Artist's Way. I just bought that book for somebody I love who's working on their first book. And whether you're looking to write a book, a blog, or just be more creative in your cooking, I know for me, it just <laughs> allows you to be self-expressed and it's just taking the practice. It doesn't have to be, you know, the next Harry Potter, but you know, you're just writing for the sake of getting in touch with yourself. I love it. And the morning pages are from that where you write three pages every single day, though I highly recommend, I think even Martin Scorsese recommends, uh, you know, The Artist's Way. It's a beautiful book, great Christmas gift or New Year's gift to share with someone or yourself. Yeah, it's so wonderful. And you hear, oh my gosh, I have to write three pages a day. How am I going to do that? But then you start writing and getting your thoughts on the page. And then writing can evolve however you want. A lot of things I do too is writing the dream down, writing what you see. I heard one time that vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Mm -hmm. That applies to all of us. Our lives, there's invisible things that we know, whether you're sitting next to Oprah, right? And the dream's coming true or the Broadway show or wh whatever it is, you can write it down. And it allows me, I have journals upon journals. I mean, I don't even know what to do with, right? But it's your thoughts on that page. And it's something beautiful to look back to because you often see what you wrote down came true maybe in a different way than you thought, but right, Brandon, go. Well, no, because this is a perfect, brilliant example of that which you thought when you started the journaling or the collection is not where you end. And it's the same thing of, this was not a great, donate to your local theater, donate to people, D donate to the arts, please. It is, artists are struggling and, and they feed off the audiences. This is, this is it's traumatic for everyone. Um, but, and, uh, you know, donate to anyone who is isolating. I mean, of course, first responders, uh, which is with my family and what they've given, you know, there's, there's the feeding the body and taking care of the body and it's just taking care of the soul and um, both are important in this earth. One thing that uh, stands out for me though, is that in this year where so many theaters struggled, transcendence struggled, but not as much as they had if they hadn't recorded every damn show they've done since year one. And because of that, Amy would call it evolution, Brandon would call it pivot. Either way, they were able to mobilize uh, and do a full season as they would any other year, but virtually. And they were amazing. We would grab my daughter and my wife around and we'd watch and he really made it a beautiful, the season just wrapped. Um, but I really encourage people if they can. And Amy, we're gonna have you tell us where we can find all the info. Um, but one of Amy's goals and transcendent goals is to reach a whole new audience. And they are located in the most gorgeous, perfect place on earth, Jack London State Park in Glen Ellen, California, which is part of Sonoma. Go, who was in USA Today, is one of the top three outdoor venues on, on, in the entire United States. It is a magical place. That's where Jack London wrote and visioned. And I just think about that, that because you didn't know when you recorded all those shows that you would need it for 2020, but you needed it for 2020. And it also reminds me of something that's near and dear to you, me, and Brad, sitting on a carpet in Studio City, all of us wondering what we were going to do with our lives around 2007, 2008, me knowing I couldn't be a lawyer anymore and deciding I, at that time, I don't think I could be an agent either, so I had to figure it out. And watching Harold Clorin, one of the most prolific directors, critics, uh, theater people on earth, 
And Harold, the, there's a line in this amazing video. He talks a lot of things, but there's a line where he talks about his favorite thing in life are his flops. He's the most prolific, successful man. He talks about his flops, his disasters. And he talks about feeling it. He wants to feel life in his brain. He gets a little more graphic. But the point is that every one of us, I think there was a moment for the three of us watching that at not necessarily the highest point in either of any of our careers, but that potential that in the flop, in the down, ah, man, that's when you grab life. That's when you feel it. That's when you own it. Because otherwise, what the F is the point of being on stage and looking at thousands of people? What's the point of flying people on a private jet, Jennifer? What's the point that I've had time and time again in front of an audience or just the other, last week was one of the best few days of my career, just a unique connection I made that two clients that are going to work together. It doesn't matter. It's all not worth it if you don't feel the flops, if you don't live in the manure, as he says. And so I just love that. I love that we don't know why we're creating. You don't know why you're creating or you're visioning. You will. But that doesn't mean you should stop. Amy, I didn't know this is where we're going to begin. I'm going to have you do something I've had no one guest ever do. Are you ready? Gosh. Hold me on the spot, my dear friend. Oh, I'm going to have you wrap with where we can find you. But I normally give three to four takeaways. I would love for you to do what you've done for hundreds, if not thousands of other people. Gosh. Give the audience two or three actions they can take before the end of this year or if they're listening this in 2022, 22, sorry, in 2022, they can take that week. But anyway, three things they can do to make their tomorrow a little bit better than today. Okay. Put me on the spot here. There's so many things Got you it. can do. Three of them I think you could do. One, which we always do at Transcendence, take four deep breaths. When you need it through the day or when you wake up in the morning, if you want to do it in the morning and take four deep breaths. Because as I've heard, you can't be in the past. You can't be in the future. You can only be in the present. And when you're in that present, it normally locks everyone into gratitude for that present moment. Four deep breaths. I'm doing three of them? Three? Okay, here we go. I love you, buddy. Go, go nuts. I'll do three. Taking it from Jennifer being awesome with the, uh, with the way of feeling and visioning and having all your senses and experiences and everything, go on your magic walk. Go out into nature or into your backyard if you're not leaving your house, wherever it is. Go on your walk and feel what it feels like if everything you want in 2021 has come true. <laughs> Just, and you know what? One of the biggest things, because we're so far reaching, the thing to think about though is a way of being goal. On your walk, feel how your way of being you want to be, whether you're walking in gratitude, whether you're showing up every day and be like, I might be going through something hard, but I'm appreciating the moment. This is the best day ever. So number two was the magic walk. <clears throat> you can do a lot of things on a magic walk, but feel it, you can dream, you can have gratitude. Your magic walk is whatever your magic walk you want to have happen. <clears throat> Gosh, the third one. I would say in realizing what's important, get out your journal and write down to you what is important in your life, but the connections and people that are the most important to you. Those people, and there's so many people to be important about, but, but I know every day, no matter what, Micah, and Brad, think about all of those people and on and Brandon and on, who are all those people? Write a list of hundreds of them if you want, right? And when you look at that list, have gratitude for them and know every day in 2021, when you get up to live your dreams and your best life ever, and you're staying strong in your purpose, you are living your life purpose, know that you're staying strong for all of those people and for a whole bunch of people that are not on your list. Because your life, my last thing in terms of New Year's, I've been doing this since I was eight years old. I don't know how I've been doing this. But I close my eyes 
and I think about all the people I know in my life leading up to the year. Just think about them. Eight-year-old Amy Miller, thinking about everyone, flashing in the last, last bit of the last minute of the year. And then my mind would jump forward to all the people I was going to meet in that year. Oh. All the people I was going to meet in the year. Because in the next year when we write out our list, there's going to be more of those people, right? The, the moral of this to me is what I think a lot of us have learned in the struggle of 2020 is the importance of what truly matters. And to me, that's connection to the wonderful people and beings and everything that we share this great adventure of life with. Those are our things. Boom. Boom. Yep. Well done, Amy. <laughs> you got this. I was put on the spot. <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're taking my job. Let's just get her. Let's get Amy on the show every week. Don't do the wraps. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well done, Amy. Well put. <laughs> oh, God. It's brilliant. This is so much fun. Amy, where can people discover transcendence? Where can um, PSA look at best, best man toast ever on YouTube? Um, Amy song. I it's it's got millions of hits. It's the one of the best videos out there. I gave the toast right before the <laughs> best best toast ever. So uh, that's not on YouTube, thank God. But uh, the one after me is pretty memorable. So check that. <laughs> Amy, other than that, where can people find you? Or transcendence. <laughs> The website for Transcendence Theater Company, which is an amazing place, like Brandon said, in wine country, in the ruins of an old winery that was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake, vineyards, music, sunset, wine, dancing, singing, Broadway. The website is bestnightever.org. There's a lot of best evers around here, but it's bestnightever.org. And now we're excited to be able to share it with more people around the world. So we have our different shows and we're really going to focus this year on just expanding that reach and sharing the magic of transcendence with people, especially in a time where people mentally and emotionally need that connection and work and artistry for their souls. So we're going to just continue living out those best days and nights ever. Love that. Thank you so much, Amy. You are a genius. I can see why Brandon wanted to have you on, especially <laughs> for our last show of the year. I mean, I just, you have this energy that's contagious of just passion. And I think it can help all of us. I know for me, just listening to you and Brandon talk today, it helped re-engage and relight that fire. And I'm intending that it did that for all of our listeners, everybody tuning in now or in the future. Thank you to all of you who tuned in with us too on Facebook Live. I know we had Rev Reg and many others from around the world who tuned in. And thank you for all of your comments and your feedback. Continue please to rate us on iTunes. We greatly appreciate all the ratings and reviews we've received under Get Yourself the Job on iTunes or follow us on our Facebook page of Get Yourself the Job. Uh, you can also find us on latalkradio.com's page too. So please, we're so grateful. It's only because of you and you sharing this show with your friends and your family that we're able to continue to grow and bring you great guests like Amy. And we're deeply, deeply grateful for you and for this year that you've spent with us whenever and wherever you're tuning in from. It's huge gratitude for you for being here with us. Uh, Brandon, any closing thoughts from you, my friend? I'm one of the great gifts of this of my life is that I get to do this with you, Jennifer, in 2021. Amy Miller has helped make my life better, but it's just what she does for so many. And to our audience, please reach out to me and Jennifer, whether that's on LinkedIn or email, reach out. We are happiest, truly. I think actually the three of us have this in common. We are all happiest when we are in service. So please, in 2021, we ask you, all of you, to reach out so we can better serve you and you can change the world for the better. Totally agree. Thank you so much, my friend. That reminds me, if you want to email us your thoughts, do so at Get Yourself the Job at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and your thoughts on this year's shows. And please do come back and join us. We have an epic year coming up for you. We are going to devote the first three months of this coming year to everything you need to know, getting the job A to Z, from gaining confidence, networking, using LinkedIn to be hired, how to interview. It's just going to be a lot of fun. So we invite you to join us on this journey. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Amy. And thank you to everybody at Awake, or at, uh, sorry, I host another show on Awake TV, to Awake TV too. I'm very grateful for them. And to Ronan and Sam and everybody here at LA Talk Radio, I don't think we say it often enough, but a huge thank you to everybody here who 
the hard work, the long hours, the holidays you guys work to allow us to bring this show to everybody around the world. It's deep, deep gratitude for you this year and every year. Thank you, gentlemen. You're listening to Get Yourself the Job with Jennifer Hill and Brandon Maslin, only on LA Talk Radio.